So again, my name is Lauren. I'm currently a PhD candidate at Virginia Tech. And today I'm gonna to talk to you and building on what we learned from Zong and from Ed before and looking at a case study, a field study of what happens in the soil when you do amend agricultural soils with dairy manure or compost and what, what's that effects on the actual antibiotics and antibiotic resistant bacteria that we can find in these soils. So not to keep overriding it, but antimicrobial resistance is a serious human health concern. And we've seen that from the first two presentations as well. And a lot of people not in our field think it's just from a clinical point of view, but we know and we're starting to educate the public on that it's an environmental source also. So we know that there's an antimicrobial resistant issue in agricultural systems. And from livestock, the livestock industry provides two sources that look at the potential spread of resistance in our agricultural sources. They provide the antibiotic source and also the fecal bacteria source for potential resistance spread. Um, in the United States alone, we use over 6 million tons of manure in our ag systems daily. And that, that allows for this potential spread from farm, from the cow to fork, to be actually on the vegetables that the consumer could assume. Um, there are some treatments in place to try to decrease that, to uh, potentially mitigate the spread of AMR in uh, agricultural systems, which Ed had previously talked on. And some of those manure management pre-application practices uh, include, well, one, you don't do anything, it's untreated. You can use anaerobically digested uh, techniques. You can do mechanically dewatering, which separates the liquids from the solids. And you can also compost. And a lot of our studies today look at composting. You can also check out this link below uh, from this webinar series too that talks about different manure treatments. So today I'm gonna focus on untreated versus composted manure. So what I've been a part of at Virginia Tech for the last four years is working on this USDA NEFA grant, reducing antibiotic resistance from farm to fork. And we are really looking at it from a systems approach, from already looking at, okay, we know what concentration, what we gave the antibiotics or gave the, the animals, the livestock. We know how we composted that manure, what we did to treat that manure. We know the rates that we applied it to the fields. We know what we did when we harvested the vegetables and cleaned the vegetables. So ultimately, we can look at the systems approach from farm to fork. Additionally, part of this experiment was a field study, and that's what I'll talk about today with the goals of really looking at these, the new or updated USDA FISMA guidelines. So FISMA is the Food Safety Modernization Act. And some of the guidelines that they have in place is to wait 120 days wait period once you apply manure to soils and also adhere to stabilized composting methods like getting reaching thermophilic temperatures for so much time and what's your C to N ratios. So I was a part and I performed this field study. This took place in Blacksburg, Virginia, where Virginia Tech is. And these are just some pictures of the process of it, actually building these plots, making sure that they went down to the clay layer of the soil, uh, making sure we don't have any cross contamination, uh, planting all the radish seeds, transplanting lettuce, making the plates for culturing in that bottom, that bottom right, harvesting the vegetables. We harvested over two tons of vegetables. You can see in this upper left-hand corner. Uh, so just going into that study now, this real world study that happened outside. And here we go. So we tested three things. We tested the amendments that you add to soil. We tested the effects of what kinds of crop you grow in the soil, and also over time, over those 120 days, what's happening in the soil. So we had five amend amendments. We had a no amendment control. We had an inorganic chemical fertilizer control. Then we had three amendments derived from dairy cows. The first was a compost from cows not treated with any antibiotics. They were our control compost. And then we had a compost from cows treated with pyrimidine or cefepirin. And then a worst case scenario, just raw manure from the cows treated with pyrolimycine and cefepirin. And in these plots, we drew either lettuce or radish to look at the effects of a leafy crop versus a root 
crop, which would be radish. And these are just some photos, like when we applied the manure, the compost, and then we mixed it into the first five centimeters of the soil. On day 42, here are little lettuce transplants, and then at harvest was day 67. Additionally, we quantified antibiotics and the, uh, we tested resistance to five different antibiotics. So the antibiotics that we quantified in these soils were pyrimidine and cefepirin. These were the antibiotics administered to the cows. Um, they're used for to treat mastasis. And then the drugs that we tested or we tested for resistance or the yeah, we tested resistance for was ceftazidime, clindamycin, erythromycin, sulfamethoxyl, and tetracycline. And we use these suite of antibiotics because they're critical to both human and animals, and they're on the highly important and critical important World, Hor or World Health Organization list. Uh, so we thought these were really important to look at uh, in the soils, and also we did a control. So we just looked at total fecal coliforms with no antibiotic uh, added. Okay, so diving right into the results, the first is the antibiotic results. So we could not quantify cefepirin, uh, that was below detection limit altogether. And then for pyrimidine, we could only detect it in the raw manure amended soils, in both lettuce and radish. In this figure on the left, we have our time points of the soil samples on the x-axis, and on the y-axis we have the ratio of the remaining concentration at a given uh, time over the initial concentration of a tested compound. So what we found was that, again, it was only quantified in the raw manure, not any of the composted amended soils. And by day 90, it was uh, below the detection limit. So back to background levels. Then going into the results for the antibiotic resistant fecal coliforms that we found in these soils. So we saw that there are three patterns of resistance over time, and I'll get more into those. We also found there's this trend in compost versus manure. Some of the drugs had higher levels of fecal coliforms or resistant fecal coliforms in the compost amended soils, while other had higher levels in the raw manure amended soils. And overall, there really was no effect on the vegetable type. So your crop type, whether you're growing a leafy vegetable or a root vegetable. Okay, so the first trend in time is continued detection. On the x-axis of these figures, we have the time and day, so when we sampled the soil, and on the y-axis, we have the average log base 10 CFU. So a CFU is a colony forming unit. It's uh, in cultural microbiology, that's when you count all the uh, the cultures or the colonies on the plate, and then you can figure out the concentration of, or the levels of the bacteria in your samples. So on the left here, we have total fecal coliforms, on the right we have the ceftazidine resistant fecal coliforms, and we saw for this the same trend, continued detection. Whether we applied the manure over here with the blue arrow on day zero, all the way through day 120, we see continued detection, and then in the summer months, uh, again, this study took place from the end of March to the end of July. We see we see an increase. Uh, I do find it interesting that in the right hand side we had uh, increased levels in the compost amended soils, uh, which right composting is a treatment, a pre uh, application treatment of manure. So you see an increase there. Next, we go into our second time. Uh, that we had initial decline followed by a post-harvest spike. So again, these are the same uh, axes for the graphs we've seen before, and we had clindamycin-resistant fecal coliforms and then erythromycin-resistant. And what we see is, yes, at manure application, there's a spike, and then over time, it goes back to background levels, and then by day 90, day 120, we see an increase again, uh, which is, this now is in the compost amended soils for the clindamycin. We see this decrease in compost uh, levels uh, in the amended soils, but before we saw that increase compared to the raw manure. I do want to point out that we see a spike in this last time point in the no amendment control. And yeah, this is interesting, right? Because no amendment control, we didn't add anything to these soils. We can go back and say, well, it could be natural resistance, but we didn't really see that spike before. So maybe it is a temperature correlation. You're heating up 
the soil in the summer months, and perhaps that's a correlation. We did find that correlation too with increase in total bacteria. Okay, and then our third uh, trend was no recovery. So this was for the sulfamethoxyl and the tetracycline resistant coliforms. And we see that yes, there's a spike in the raw manure on day zero when we apply these amendments to the soil, but then it, it, re, uh, it goes back down to below detection limit for the rest of the study and quantitatively, there is no difference between amendment, amendment time or crop type. So sort of looking at this, why could we see different trends in the compost for the different antibiotics? Some compost um, had lower ARB levels like for the clindamycin and erythromycin resistant fecal coliforms. However, some of the compost amended soils had higher levels for the total fecal coliforms and also ceftazidine resistant. And that could be for multiple reasons. There's lots of studies out there that really see, okay, composting does have an effect on uh, the survival and of these bacteria. It could be due to their enzymatic capabilities, their moisture content, their thermotolerant, the nutrients that have been supplied. Um, and a lot of the studies right now have been finding or have been published about composting in regards to E. coli is that even if you heat up your compost to 67 degrees C, your E. coli still persists. The E. coli, the e. coli isn't going to decay over time, it's still going to persist. So my take home message after this study and what I want you to go home with is yes, we did see that composting your manure and adding that to soils had lower levels of antibiotic resistant bacteria than the raw manure amended soils for the clindamycin and the erythromycin resistant fecal coliforms. These drugs happen to be in the same class of antibiotics as the antibiotics given to the dairy cows. Um, however, their compost did have a higher level of um, fecal coliforms related to the cephalosporins. So it might be that this is based on the antibiotic that you're testing, the drug class, the mechanism of resistance that you're testing. Uh, there was no significant difference between the antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria levels in the soils that grew lat lettuce versus radish. And that my big, my big take home here is antibiotics might not be the sole driver of the bacteria presence slash resistance we saw that the antibiotics had dissipated in the soils by day 90. We couldn't even quantify cefepirin. However, we still could culture these uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. So moving on, right now I'm doing studies to look at the ARGs, the taxonomic and functional profiles of these soils to really put together the puzzle pieces of who's driving what, what's happening in these soils if it's not the antibiotics. So I just wanna end with some Publications that we're working on. This first one is the Soils Pub, that is this study that I just talked about. We also did an associated runoff uh, study from the surface water runoff during storm events of these same plots and the vegetables that we grew in these plots. Uh, we have that study too. And we also have a study website um, down at the very bottom here that looks at each part of the system cycle uh, that, we, that we looked at from farm to fork. So thank you.